Rehab's main objective is the development of high added value products uh, based on the insulation and purification of, of biomass in order to obtain intermediates that are able to, to reach uh, new products in the market. My name is Saitor Barrio, I work in Technalia. I am senior research in Technalia and I work in the construction division and I am currently the leader of the development of bio-based materials. I'm uh, Hendrik Wagman, I'm Head Business Operations at the Biobase Europe Pilot Plant. Uh, we are the process development and scale-up partner in the Rehab project. Rehab has covered a lot of different aspects of the circular bio-based economy. Uh, first of all, it has been using very relevant and abundantly available feedstocks, forestry side streams like spruce bark, uh, agro-industrial uh, side streams like uh, wheat straw, and it has converted these using the full potential of the biomass into sugars, um, into tannins, into lignin, and using those to convert them into chemical intermediates, which then are further converted into very interesting products like plasticizers, polyurethanes, biophenolic resins, and bioesters. Bioresin produced from biomass, we can produce th this kind of boards, that is INDF, medium density fiber board, uh, that we use the, the resin like a, bi a binder. This is a typical board that can be used in construction or in furniture or in other application. Our objective was to, to obtain similar properties like the, the fossil basin materials. And we have similar mechanical properties, similar uh, durability, so it's comparable to the fossil base. So the advantage of the product is that it's bio-based and is more sustainable than the fossil based material. Many studies inventorized which um, side streams are abundantly available in Europe and forestry side streams like spruce bark and agro-industrial side streams like wheat straw are the top two eh, in, in, the, in those lists. So it uh, has been very important that we have focused on those streams in the rehab project. My name is Ingemar Svensson and I work at Technalia here as a uh, senior researcher. I've taken uh, hydrolysis lignin from the bioethanol pilot plant, either from uh, uh, wheat straw or poplar fragments. Purified it at lab scale so it could be transferred uh, and scaled up. We succeeded this and got a quite pure lignin and uh, then we have uh, modified it to make two products out of, of this lignin. Super plasticizers and fire retardants. Fire retardant we think it's really promising. We have quite high content of phosphorus in, in the lignin so we, we think that it will perform very well. We have reached uh, similar properties than the fossil base, that is a, a, a very good news. And we have comparable prices. We are optimizing the processes, but more or less we have comparable uh, results from fossil bases, so it's a, a very good result. We have a, a bio base alternative uh, of the current use plasticizer. There are two main products in the market that are lignosulfonate that are biobased but have a low performance in plasticizing effect. And we have polycarboxylate that have a high performance in plasticizing but are fossil based. So the, we have developed a product, a biobased product based on lignin that is in terms in, in the medium of this kind of products. My name is Edurne Arquicia and I work in Technalia in Building Technologies Division and I work mostly with uh, cement. Lignosulfonates are used as uh, additives in uh, concrete and uh, what they do is they uh, lower the viscosity of the, of the paste when you mix it with the water. So you don't need to add a, a lot of water because if you add too much water, the mechanical properties uh, get, get reduced. And, but you, you get a flowable 
uh, with the right consistency to, to put it anywhere you want the concrete. And we saw how flowable it made with different dosages and we compare it to, uh, to a commercial one. For that, we use uh, what is called a slump test, which is you, make, you put the paste in a cone, you remove the cone and it, you, you see how, how far it spreads. So you measure. So uh, if the spread is uh, higher than the other one, it's the flowability is higher than in the other case. What we saw is that with a lower dosage, we get more spread than with the commercial one. And, it, and then also at the same dosage, uh, it maintains for longer time the, the, the spread. With lower dosages, uh, getting a bigger spread, that means that you need less. So economically, it's, ma it's better to use uh, lower dosages. So it could be, uh, could be commercially interesting. We have developed a new process to obtain acyclic carbonate from biomass and a process to reach non-isocyanide polyurethanes because the market is demanding sustainable, no toxic and bio-based processes. So that rehab project has allowed us to be closer to delivering what the market needs. My name is Tomás Roncal. I'm working in Tecnalia, and we are in charge of the process of the fermentation of 2,3-butandiol from, from lignocellulosic sugars. It is problematic to, to use uh, second-generation sugars for fermentation because they contain usually uh, inhibitors of fermentation. The problem was the presence of acetic acid in the, in the hydrolysates. So with a preliminary uh, process of uh, cleaning of this uh, of the of the hydrolysates by a simple uh, process we uh, we uh, we get a hydrolysate free of acetic acid so when you when we used this this uh, hydrolysate we obtained a good uh, a successful fermentation comparable in the, in the parameters to those obtained with first generation sugar. So it was a very, very successful uh, fermentation. With it's very important because we can substitute the 23 butandiol that, uh, that uh, currently is obtained from petrochemical uh, feedstocks with, uh, with a, a compound that is obtained from renewable uh, 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 feedstock, from biomass. I'm Francisca Rio from Biosincaucho. Biosincaucho is a startup from Tecnalia. We own the patent for a process in which we use first uh, generation sugars to uh, manufacture 2,3-butendiol. The real value of the rehab project for Biosincaucho has been that we have demonstrated that our fermentation process and downstream processes to manufacture 2,3-butendiol works with second generation sugars, which is very important because we can use renewable raw materials in our processes. If we transform 2,3-butendiol in a commodity chemical, it can be used for a lot of applications. Petrochemical 2,3-butendiol uh, has uh, an elevated price uh, because the production pro processes are very complex. But if we, ha if we can produce 2 3 protein dion from renewable raw materials and uh, in a low price, uh, we can construct a, an industrial plant to manufacture this product. I think that the main value of rehab is the real uh, the obtention of, of products, of bio-based products that uh, can substitute the current based uh, fossil-based materials because uh, the, the companies that are involved in the project are very happy with the results because it's, it's uh, quickly uh, it's quick uh, to substitute these uh, fossil-based materials for, for the bio-based materials. And other value, we have created new methodology and new processes 
that could be, of course, uh, improved, but uh, we have uh, paid the way that for, for these kind of technologies and, and open a lot of opportunities for continuing with the, with the results uh, for the purification, for the chemical modification, and also for the, for the new products that we, we have created. The products that we have been producing here are intermediates. So they are used for the production of polyurethanes and other, uh, and other applications. So it's important to have substantial amounts of products to do those downstream tests. So for example, if you need 40 kilograms of a product to make wooden panels, yeah, then the, those 40 kilograms need to be produced first and purified. Um, in order to do that, you need larger equipment that you don't have in a lab facility. Um, on the other hand, also processes that are, have been developed on laboratory scale are not necessarily scalable. So it could be that they have been developed in such a way that, uh, for example, toxic solvents are used or conditions are used that cannot be applied at larger scale. So what we also do is we transform those processes into something that is scalable. My name is uh, Anouk van Kaneet and I'm a team leader of bioprocessing here at the BioBay Zero pilot plant. So I'm in charge of a team of process engineers uh, who work together uh, to run the processes here at the pilot plant. Scientists from VTT and process engineers from the BioBay Zero pilot plant have worked together uh, in order to develop an industrial viable process for the recovery of uh, tannins, lignin and sugars from agroforestry waste. So more specifically we used bark uh, and also um, popular hydrolysis residues. Um, so we translated the lab scale protocol from VTT, uh, to, which was a batch process, to a continuous process on um, pilot scale and then eventually industrial scale. One of the challenges we observed in the rehab project was the pumpability of the bark. So the hoses were clogging because of the fibers, uh, and that's something you don't see on lab scale. We did a lot of pumpability trials and in the end we selected the best industrial pump to run the process. Together with a team from Biosyncocho and Technalia, we translated the lab scale protocol for the production of 2 3 betaine diol into a process that we can apply here at Biobase on pilot scale. This way it will be possible for the process to run at industrial scale. Another challenge that we've encountered was purification of the 2 3 betaine diol which uses solvents. This meant that we had to take extra safety measures, use special equipment and perform a detailed risk analysis to perform the process in a safe way. One of the main successes of the rehab project is that we produced high amounts of tannins, lignin and sugars from a highly abundant waste stream, namely agroforestry waste. This not only uh, reduces the CO2 emissions in the process industry, but it also uh, boosts the circular bioeconomy. So we're very proud that in the rehab project we have optimized the different conversion steps and demonstrated the whole overall process at pilot scale in a pre-industrial setting using flexible multi-purpose equipment. I think what we would like to do next is to demonstrate the same process but now in an industrial setting using dedicated equipment. Rehab has demonstrated that it's possible to, to read uh, bio-based products uh, and, uh, as an alternative to the fossil-based materials by using uh, improved processes and technologies uh, using biomass and feedstock as, as a starting material. We have developed a new technology and a new processes that, that is very interesting for the coming research in, in this field, in the bioeconomy. It is an important result for the project, but it could have a, a very important impact in the bioeconomy and also in the society as a whole.